Greetings everyone, welcome back to another video. And we're back playing Corpse Party Book of Shadows. It's been quite some time since I've last played it. Let me raise the volume real quick. Okay. It's been some time since I've last played Corpse Party Book of Shadows, but I just wanted to kind of get back into it. Um, because if I come over to options, like, I, I just, you know, I haven't really been doing this. So we did, um, we come, I, I believe last time we actually completed, uh, five, right? Chapter five. Because we got the true ending. I, I'm going to be doing the, the bad endings, like, later on. I'm just trying to complete the game and get the true ending, but we're on to Mire. Uh, so we're gonna work on trying to get the true ending. I have my guide that I've been using <laughs> this whole, um this whole playthrough because uh because why not? I've been trying to make sure everything's right. Okay, settings look right. So let's click uh continue or hold up new chapter because I don't think I started it yet. We're on to meet it. And then after me day, there is Tooth. And yeah. Apparently there's an eighth chapter. Well, I don't know. <clears throat> so let's do this. So cough, cough, cough. Shiver, shudder. Where am I? The first thing I saw when I opened my eyes was the ceiling of a dark, gloomy room with flickering, uncovered light bulbs. The random bursts of light uh, they shone were so dim that they only just barely lit up the wood grain on the ceiling enough to see patterns in it. Ow. The back of my head hurt in the same way it, it would if someone had just pulled my hair really hard. I couldn't do anything about it though, so I just frowned and waited on it, uh, waited for it to subside. Ugh. I wonder if I'd hit my head somewhere. I can't remember a thing. I suddenly realized that my feet were t weren't were touching the ground, and there was a cold sensation all along my back. I must have been lying down on a hard surface. I tried to move, but both my arms and both my legs had gone to sleep, and they wouldn't budge. <sighs> I just have to keep lying here until they woke up. I gave up on moving and instead just stared up at the gloomy ceiling again. I don't like it. The wood grain looks like a person's face. I knew it wasn't actually a person, but it really did look like one, and he was glaring down at me with a hateful expression. It was creepy. Why does it look familiar? Where have I seen that face before? Oh, that was it. It looked like the scream that that much that munch painting we studied in class. Except this face was screaming in anger. He hated me. Uh, I'm really starting to get scared now. If only Big Brother were here with me. He'd just pat my head and laugh and tell me how silly I was being. Oh yeah, where is Big Brother? I was still a little disoriented, but I turned and twisted my head as best as I could manage to see if I could find him anywhere nearby. How was I sleeping in a place like this anyway? And why wasn't Big Brother at my side, like he always was? I remember bringing Big Brother his umbrella, then doing some kind of charm with his friends, and then I was in an old school building. And then Big Brother and I were, lo uh, were looking all over for a bathroom so I could go pee, and we got separated. Big Brother, why were we in this school to begin with? Maybe the charm failed and this was our punishment. Maybe I was the one who messed it up. I probably shouldn't have been there. And if I hadn't asked them to help me try to find a bathroom, we wouldn't be separated, right? I should have just held his hand and not let go. I could have lasted a little longer without peeing. Then we'd still be together. What happened to me after that? Uh, um... That's right, I finally found a bathroom, but when I went inside... There were people hanging in there, or what? There were people hanging in there, lots of them. Oh. Hey. I was so freaked out. I went back into the hall and collapsed onto the floor, and then, and then I was talking with someone. Um, it was a boy who had gotten separated from his little sister. I think. He said he'd help me find Big Brother. His name. That's right. It was Yuya Kizami. Uh. 
Um, it hurts. It really hurts. Why can't I move? Why? I didn't realize that. I couldn't see my arms. Were they... Were... Where were they? We... Why weren't they at my sides? They were still numb, too. So, I couldn't feel where they were either. But I tried my best to move them anyway. That sounded like rope. Am I tied up? I thought maybe the reason I couldn't feel my arms or legs or... And couldn't move was because I was tight. What? What? Because I was tied up really tight and it was cutting off my circulation. Come on, move! With some effort, I was finally able to move my fingertips. I started feeling everything I could, uh, grateful, great, what, I could, <laughs> grateful even for this little bit of reassurance. I, I feel something. The rope around my wrist had been tied up tightly and looped many times over, and with the circulation trickling down, uh, trickling back into my hands, it was really painful. It hurts. It hurts. I was so scared, it felt like I'd forgotten how to breathe. Damn. S somebody's coming. The footsteps were echoing from out in the hallway. They stopped right in front of this door, or this room. Big brother! Big brother! I wriggled in place and screamed as loud as I could. I didn't even care about the old uh, splintery rope cutting into my wrists and ankles anymore. Big brother, big brother, save me. It's Yuka. I'm right here. Save me, please. You shouldn't writhe around like that. The ropes will just hurt that much more. What's this guy? Oh, yeah. I forgot about this guy. My apologies for the long wait. It's so dark in here. You must have been terrified. Goddamn. We're tied up. Okay. <laughs> Okay, that's the uh, that's the beginning of uh of episode six. Of episode six. Okay. He's zombie. Uh, hold up. I actually wanna. What button is it to hide again? There. I just wanna get a thumbnail. You know, like I always do. There we go. Okay. Are you all right, Yuka? was looking at me with a caring, sympathetic smile on his face. He seemed to be really concerned about me. He's not. Please, save me. When I came to, I was all tied up. You were indeed. And I'm the one responsible for that. I wanted to make sure I never got separated from my dear little sister ever again. Uh, little sister? I actually, want to hide. I actually want to hide this one because, uh... Because her face changed, you know? Uh, okay, there you go. You, of course. That's why I had to tie you up down, so you wouldn't ever leave me. Why, Kizami, are you joking with me? Why, you ask? What a silly question. I already told you. Because you're my little sister. What part of that don't you understand? Okay. I don't understand it at all. I'm... I'm not... Damn. Well, you are still just a child. So maybe you're simply too young to comprehend. Uh... Hold up. That was a screenshot. And that, uh, went into full screen. I didn't want to do that. Hold up, I'm trying to figure out what button. I forgot what buttons are my uh my key like my uh there. That's it. Um but that like kind of pauses the game. Okay. There we go. <laughs> We're siblings after all. We simply have to reach an understanding. Okay. His eyes looked like they were staring far off into the distance like he was in a trance i'm scared big brother i'm scared oh how is he doing this why did he tie me up and why did he look so happy about it i didn't get any of it every hair of my body was standing on end i was terrified isn't there any way I can escape? 
the corners of my eyes were on fire. I couldn't stop myself from crying. Tears were flowing down my face like a waterfall. Okay, yeah, no, I'm just gonna turn it off. <laughs> Kizami smiled, then reached out and touched my cheek. His hand was ice cold. It was like there was no blood flowing through it at all. Like the hand of a dead person. I've been waiting so long for you to wake up. <laughs> Bro, what? <laughs> <laughs> now, show me that spark of life. Put everything you've got into it and cry for me, Yuka. Cry as loud as you can. He slowly and hesitantly took his hands off my cheek, then began walking around me towards my feet. Then he gently grabbed my skirt with one hand and drew a knife from his breast pocket with the other. <laughs> it's showtime! Bro, what? Uh, what? There. Just like that, that's the voice I've been longing to hear, and the face I've been longing to see. It's only when one's terror and hopelessness reach their peak that the soul... <sighs> that the soul truly shines. I want to see more, direct more of that into me. <laughs> Yuka, Yuka, I know you're capable of shining even brighter. <laughs> well, don't you worry. Your big brother will help reveal that light. Covered in blood and writhing in pain. <laughs> Try suffering, or true suffering is a far, far prettier sight than <laughs> What's wrong, Yuka? This is no time to rest. The fun is only just beginning. <laughs> oh. So, why don't you try calling me Big Brother? Big Brother, save me! Big brother, please, come save me. What are you saying, Yuka? Your big brother is right here. Look, right in front of your eyes. No, my big brother is... The panic and fear just kept getting, over, getting more overpowering. I think I was hyperventilating. But Kizami shoved no mercy or showed no mercy, he reached out and grabbed my neck. Living rabbits really do make far too much noise. Can't breathe. <laughs> what a thin neck you have. So soft and supple. I can feel your carotid, car car carotid, what, carotid, what the what? Artery and your cervical vertebrae. Perfectly. These muscles. This curvature. Look. Oh. So sensual. Like it was made for my hand. <laughs> Is it painful? It must be painful. <laughs> This is your fault, you know. I'm your only big brother around here. With that, he let go of my neck, but then hastily pulled the knife in his hand right up to my face. He made sure I could see every inch of it clearly and just held it there, slowly turning it for what it felt like an eternity. Have you gotten a good look at it, Yuka? The knife was stained with red splatters, splatter marks. Um, no. Not even red. Just dark. It wasn't a color. I knew well. But there was only one thing I, it could have been. Blood. No. 
this? No need to worry. Kurosaki dirtied it a bit, but it still cuts like new. Oh, oh man, I was shivering so hard I could feel my teeth vibrating. A chill ran through every part of me, as if I were so afraid that it had actually lowered my body temperature. The chattering coming from inside my mouth was getting louder and louder to such an extent that even I was getting distracted by it. What a lovely face, my little sister is doing an excellent job. But her clothes are in the way. Okay. Kizami, Kizami suddenly tore my uniform and exposed my stomach. What's this? Your belly is bouncing like a water balloon. It must be full of guts. The fuck? He laid the knife uh, blade flat across my belly button, and a sudden sensation of cold metal against my skin sent even more shivers up and down my spine. <laughs> if it hurts, feel free to scream, okay? There's nothing to be ashamed of. That all you got? What's the matter, Yuka? You haven't given up already, have you? Not after I've finally got my hands on the little sister I've always wanted. Oh god. I keep yawning. <laughs> my throat was completely dry. I actually wanted to cry for help, but the walls where my air pipes were stick together, breathing was hard enough. Answer me, Yuka. Yuka? Uh, I, uh, no. <laughs> That's a good girl. Now, it's time for the main event. <laughs> Big brother, S save me. Fear had taken over. I couldn't hold myself back. I knew it wouldn't go over well, and I knew it would hurt, but I forced myself to cry out. <laughs> big brother, big brother, big brother, big brother! Brother, remember? Apologize, Yuka! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, that simply won't do. You have to say, Big Brother, I'm ve so very sorry. Do it right this time. Big Brother. Big Brother, is it you, Kizami? Damn. I'm not your big brother. You bitch! What was that just now? Did I imagine it? <laughs> Hate me so much it makes you wet yourself? Brother. Oh. How very interesting. Even in such an embarrassing state, you'll still call out for help from your big brother? Pitiful. You're my adorable little sister, and I'm going to make you feel real good. So there's no need to lie there crying in your own urine. It's pitiful. Pitiful? Did I just look down at this girl and call her pitiful? Why? Why am I feeling pity for her? What's happened to me? The poor girl. How is it that even I can exhibit such useless 
the emotions. Is there still some remnant of potential within a man like me to birth these paltry platitudes? I'm not like the others, and yet even I... Okay. Kizami's mother. I keep telling you, there's no way my little boy would do something like that. But I'm afraid it's true. Your little boy, Yuya, brandished, brandished a pair of scissors with intent to harm a fellow kindergarten student. So you're saying this was done on purpose? By the time he arrived on the scene, he was looking down at his own bloodied hands and laughing. We've done everything we can for him on our end. How you wish to deal with him now is up to you. Please wait. Damn. Oh, I couldn't even ma manage to crush his eye. Ever since I was little, I've been unable to put myself in another man's shoes. I've possessed no sympathy, no empathy, and no respect for life. Slowly but surely, my parents started to see me like I was some kind of devil. They shunned me. They ignored me. They'd focus all their love and affection on my older brother and sister. On my highly successful and generally upstanding brother and sister. Well, you're a fucking psychopath. Um, might as well hide this as well. Young Kizami is there. Stupid little bitch. <laughs> Everybody liked them. I began to realize just how different life was for people who were well regarded. And since my parents had given up on me, those siblings were the only ones who'd, who ever looked after me. My brother was particularly obnoxious, always flaunting his honor student status and trying to make me into a good little boy. Sickening. He'd use his standing as my elder to boss me around and would even follow me to make sure I was behaving. But I did fight back. Once, back in elementary school, I stood up to my older brother. Uh, this one's colored this time. It's not, it's not, it's not all grayscale. It's colored. Uh, okay. What the hell are you doing? Yuya. Why did- what did you just burn? It was an animal. Oh. Are you mad because it smells? I just killed it now, so it still had some blood left in it. It was going to smell no matter what. Ugh. Ow! The hell was that for, asshole? I honestly had no idea why he'd struck me. But this was the first time I'd ever been on the receiving end of violence and it was so pissed. I tried to jump him, but he was just too big. I didn't stand a chance. Why did you have so... Why did you have so little regard for life? How can you just kill another living creature? Why would you do something like that, Yuya? You shut the fuck up. I'm the one who found it. I can do whatever the hell I want with it. I couldn't believe the asshole actually threw a punch at me was determined to hit him back. I wasn't going to give up until I succeeded. Unfortunately, his size really was an insurmountable obstacle for me. My attempts to fight back was cut short by another, much harder blow to the same cheek. Now listen to me! That was twice now. I was going to make him pay. I swore I'd injure him. My punch was going to connect. If I couldn't hit him in the head, any other part of his body would do just well. Gah. Damn it. Just because you were born first, you think you're so tough? Well, if I were just a little bigger, I'd... not getting it. You need to grow up, Yuya. As long as you're not a complete idiot, you will understand what I'm telling you someday. Our physical differences, now, aren't going to mean a damn thing in the future. Mental growth is what matters most. I want you to become someone who can sympathize with the <laughs> ah fuck. I want you to become someone who can sympathize with the pain others other people feel. 
could have sworn I saw tears welling up in his eyes. The hell was that about? He just beat me up. And now he was looking sad? <laughs> Damn it. Damn it. I'm not like you. Yes, you are. You're my little brother. You'll always be my little brother. Nothing can ever change that. Well, I can still remember a disgust disgustingly sentimental look he was giving me when I said when he said that. You can die too, then. Just die! Die, die, die! I don't care if you're my brother, I'll kill. What the hell? You just cut it out! Let me go! Get your hands off me! Wait, asshole! Listen. Mental growth is what matters most. Carve that into your heart. Never forget it. Fucking hypocrite. He acts all kind. But his punches hurt like a son of a bitch. Yuya? Are you alright? Yuya, or you didn't suffer any head trauma or anything, did you? Just leave me alone. You may not understand what he's trying to tell you right now, but one day, when you've grown up, you will. Neither of you know the first damn thing about me. Why the hell was I the last one to be born? I want a younger si sibling. Maybe then I'd have some clue what the fuck you two are talking about. Man, I love the piss out of a younger brother or sister. We do love you, Yuya. Both of us. Heh. <laughs> We know that you're a good kid at heart. Come on, let's make a grave for this little critter, okay, Yuya? A trash can would do just fine. Yuya! If you keep this up, you're going to be alone your whole life. My sister grabbed my sister grabbed me by both of my shoulders and looked me right in the eyes when she said this. But I didn't care about a word she was saying. I just pushed her away. So you're doing this because you love me, huh? Don't act like you have the first clue what I'm what I'm all about, you lying bitch. Yuya, it's the truth. I don't trust you. I don't trust anyone. I won't lose to anyone either. And I'm cer and I certainly won't tolerate other people trying to lie to me. Not ever. Not ever. <laughs> Damn, bro. <laughs> That's right. I been like this for a long time. I've always tried to figure out how to uh, intuit what others are truly feeling to get honest re reactions out of them. Damn. Or no one seems to understand that I'm incapable of understanding the people around me. That's why I've made a point of studying the world and keeping to myself. Simply trying my best not to stand out. I play the part of a loner. I pretend I'm interested in boring conversations and smile. I pretend I care about the problems of others and fake a con concerned expression. Not a single one of my classmates has ever caught on to the fact that it's all just make-believe. They greet me with a smile and I see through their lies. They all act... Like they can judge peep, judge a person based on his outward action without ever even seeing his true nature. Every one of them is completely deceived by my act. They're all empty-headed fools worthy of only my contempt. They're just like my brother and sister, unforgivable certain uh, who lie to my face. Damn, bro. That's why I've decided to conduct a little experiment. A way to see if I can really understand other people. And if I can make them understand me. I wonder if any of you, if any of you were aware that all I ever wanted was to kill you. Like animals, humans are honest. Only when they're on the brink of death. They all look me right in my in the eye and engage me engage me in real true dialogue with real exceptions damn bro bro's crazy i don't need the backstory this guy though like yeah. fine answer just what i was hoping for show me more 
Show me more of those naked emotions. Yes, sadly. I will not perform for you. I will not perform for you. What? Who is that? Is that a girl? Uh, there was only one who held back the screams and the begging and simply passed away in near silence. The hell is that? You trying to stand up to me? <laughs> oh. Ooh. Goddamn. Goddamn, bro. Goddamn. Okay. This was that one girl. It was a thoroughly unsatisfying kill. There needed, or there needs to be more mutual understanding. I'd accepted to, well, I'd expected to see some change within myself after coming to this place. But there was nothing I killed, but felt no remorse, no sympathy, none of the emotions I was supposed to feel. Yuya, all life is equal. Don't ever forget that. All life is equal, huh? Yeah, it sure is. It's all exactly the same when I, it's snuffed out. Humans, animals, and filthy worms alike. But I suppose there is one difference. Even if it feels the same after committing the sin of ending a human life, there's no turning back. No redemption. I didn't regret what I'd done, but it did make me realize that I had no uh, prospects now, no future. What was that? Did I just feel pity for someone? Damn, bro. <laughs> Damn. Damn. My stomach's all growly. Another CG, bro. What's with the CGs? There's so many CGs. <laughs> yes, that, that was it. Even then, this odd sensation of taking pity on another human being. You're really shaking. Are you all right? I uh, have to go to the bathroom. That badly? Why have you held it in for so long? I was with my big brother until just a moment ago. We got separated. Didn't you tell your big brother that you needed to use the restroom? I did, but we just kept finding unusable bathrooms. And I thought about going somewhere else, but I didn't want my big brother to see me do that, so... <laughs> what a devoted little sister. Yes, this is just what I've been looking for. Being far weaker than I, whom I tasked to protect, this is it. This is exactly it. <laughs> um, something wrong, Kizami? If I had this girl by my side, this girl upon whom I actually took pity, then maybe there could still be a future even for a man like me. Indeed, if I'm capable of feeling sorry for someone, then maybe there still exists some means of atoning for my sins. If I could just live with this little girl. <laughs> so how about it? Will you live with me? Oh, what? Uh, I... Think I'll, I'll think I'll be okay on my own. I'll look for my big brother by myself. By yourself? Why? I finally found a little sister. We must even she distance herself from me. No! Run, rabbit, run! Bad rabbit, you're coming with me. G you see, this is what happens when you disobey your big brother, Yuka. <laughs> Goddamn. 
I'd been screaming and cr I'd been cr screaming and crying so much that my throat was now bone dry, or I couldn't manage any more than a whimper. My throat was actually in a lot of pain. It burned like someone had cut it wide open. Who's who's speaking right now? Or Kizami had raised the knife as if he were about to kill me. For some reason, he just froze like that. And all I could do was lie there, struggling to breathe. Aside from his heavy panting, I could only hear the sound of my own chattering teeth. I don't want to die. I want to see my big brother again, even if it's just one last time. I breathed in as deeply as I could, then mustered every last bit of strength I had. I wanted to call out with all my might. I wanted to call for help. Big brother. No good. The sentiment was there, but the words couldn't possibly have been heard by anyone else except the person I didn't want to hear them. Big brother won't... You won't know to come help me if that's as loud as I can go. Big brother! Big brother! Big brother! My strained scream seemed to shape, shape a Kizami or sh snap a Kizami out of his trance. He brought the tip of his knife down onto my cheek, but I didn't. But it didn't break the skin. You do know that no matter how much you scream, no one's going to come save you, right? He was looking down at me with blank, empty eyes. It was like he'd just woken up from a really long dream. Big, big, bro big brother is going to come. Okay, what? <laughs> I was absolutely certain about that. He may not have found me yet. I knew he was go he was looking he was worried and looking all over for me. It was only a matter of time. Big brother is my prince, after all, and the prince always comes to rescue his princess. He's not coming. After all, he's already here. Your big brother is right here. He is cock <gasps> Shut your mouth I struggled to get out the words come to an abrupt Abrupt end as Kizami's hand presses down hard on my face, covering my nose and mouth and suffocating me. For all the pain and fear I was feeling, I knew I had a chance to fight back, so I opened my mouth and bit down hard on his palm. It must have been even harder than I thought. I could have tasted I could taste his blood. I was warm and minerally and slid down my parched throat, easing a little bit to of the pain and dryness. He is coming. Big brother is coming for sure. I just kept shouting. I didn't care if the if these were the last words I ever said. I had no regrets. I just wanted to cry out. Big brother! Big brother! Big brother! Big brother! Big brother! Big brother! Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's not coming. He's not coming. He's not coming. He's not coming. Your big brother is not coming! It all happened in an instant. Kizami just grabbed his head in, in both hands and let out a cry of pain that didn't even sound human. What is it? What is this? What the hell is this voice I'm hearing? Did I really want a little sister? I did. I wanted a little sister. Someone weaker than I. Yes. Someone who needed me. Was I really a... Was it a really a little sister that I wanted? That's right. If I had a little sister, I'd change. Ugh. I had... Uh. Ugh. <laughs> he grabbed his head again and began stumbling around. He looked like he was in real pain. There were even tears in his eyes. Damn it! God damn it! God damn it all! This is all me... No need a reason. Not now. Too late for that. This is who I am now. This is what I've become. Everything is mine. I've stomped out everyone in my way and held my head high the whole time. <laughs> Are you okay? 
Does your head hurt? I have some headache medicine in my pocket. You can take some if you want. Why does she just have headache medicine? Who carries headache medicine in their pocket? Oh. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, god damn, bro. Bro's gonna... Bro's gonna get hit by this guy. Oh, damn. <laughs> How has it come to this? If I had a little sister, maybe I have acted more like a big brother should. Yes, I'm sure of it. I'd have been like, just a little like my asshole brother when he was crying over me. <laughs> Kizami? He fell to his knees and just stayed like that, not moving, maybe not even breathing. Oh man. <laughs> After another un er unnerving yell, the huge man with the hammer just stood there, staring at me. He had blood sp uh, spattered all, all over him. Somehow, though, I got the impression he wasn't going to attack me. Are you here to save me? <laughs> he reached one hand towards me slowly and gently, though it may have been a little too slowly. He was like a zombie. As if I were watching a TV show in slow motion. What's wrong? <laughs> it almost seemed like he was afraid of me. But I was just a little girl tied to a table. What could he possibly think I'd do to him? Is there someone else here? He didn't answer. I wasn't even sure he'd heard the question. He wasn't looking at me. He was looking past me. I want to know what you're looking at. Killer. <laughs> His mournful yell echoed throughout the room. <laughs> My arms and legs suddenly went slack. I felt like I couldn't move them now. Slowly, I opened my eyes and confirmed that this enormous man had just smashed apart the dry knots that were holding my hands and feet in place. Uh, I knew he didn't. He didn't have much time. I tried my hardest. Uh, I knew he didn't have much time. I tried my hardest to wake, wake up my uh, sleeping hands and feet and shake the broken splinter, uh, splintered ropes from my wrists and ankles. Kill her. <laughs> okay. I'm saving here. I'm saving right there. And that's where I'm going to end the video. Uh, yes. Uh, this choice is the first choice. One of these will give me a bad ending, and the other one will give me a good ending, I think. Actually, I'm going to try this. I'm going to run for the door and see. After brushing the last piece of rope off my body, I leaped to the ground and began searching the rope uh, for the best escape route. Hold up. Uh, okay. The huge man may have freed me from my ropes, but I was clearly still in danger. My hands and feet are still numb. I don't know if I can do this. There were still big, uh, indented rope burns on my wrists and ankles, limiting my blood circulation. I wouldn't be I wouldn't be moving comfortably for a while yet. How? The back door of the classroom was wide open. It seemed broken actually. It looked like the huge man must have busted it in with his hammer when he came attacking. I decided to make a break for it. First I tried sidestepping past him, doing everything I could to tread lightly and keep my arms outstretched so the blood uh, would flow to them again. But then I heard the floor creeping creaking behind me. It was too late. There was nowhere left to run. The giant hammer struck my right arm, instantly fracturing it severely. The spray of blood from the impact even got in my eyes. Oh, what? Uh, the huge man raised his hammer in the in the air again. He swung with perfect precision. I was down, but he wasn't stopping. Both my arms and legs had been completely destroyed. They looked like giant 
swatted bugs on the desk, just a mess of bloody chunks. Last swing hit so hard that it broke the whole desk behind me. I found myself rolling painfully onto the ground. When I uh, when I hit, there was a, a less of there was less a thud and more a plop. Bits of my arms and legs went flying everywhere. And then I realized it wasn't just bits. What was left of my excrementes was so damaged that it all literally just snapped off my body. No, this had to be a nightmare. I couldn't be. Uh, it couldn't be real, could it? I really was like a swatted, swatted bug. I looked and felt the part completely. Uh, I didn't want to give up, even though I knew I was doomed. I tried to row myself towards the door, but that went about as well as you might expect. My head was stuck on something, and waves of pain were shooting through my entire torso. It wasn't going to last much longer. Welcome. I could see the hammer coming down onto my head. And then, for a split second, I could see in two opposite directions at once as my skull cracked down the middle like a watermelon. Damn! Damn! That wrong ending was crazy. Pretty sure it was crazier wrong endings, but still. This one only has three wrong endings, so there's two more. Uh, so the next one, Darius Mater reached 100 by examining unnecessary weapons once to the room. Oh, okay. Okay, I see. Wrong ending 2 is also easy to get, but I'm not going to get it now. I'm going to get it at the beginning of next episode, of next video. And then wrong ending 3. Yeah, I'm not there yet, so I don't think. Yeah, I don't think I'm not there yet. I'm just going to continue the, the true ending from there, and then when I get to the third wrong ending, then I'll do that. But, that's, uh, that's that. Let me come over check my endings list. We have one ending here. So, a lot of endings to claim in Shangri-La. And yeah, so guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, this was a Corpse Party Book of Shadows. Once I complete this game, I want to play Blood Drive, um, and then Corpse Party 2. But it'll probably be a, a long time until I can actually play those. Um... I kind of wish I made more videos during uh, no, uh, the October, like playing Course Party during October because it was a it was a spooky month. I didn't really do anything during the spooky month. I played like a couple horror games, I think, at the beginning of October. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe if you have not already, and I will see you all next time. Peace out and bye bye.